Wouldn't it be cool if we could go out tonight? Yeah, we're poor student budget. Yeah, but like, wouldn't it be cool if I just had a thousand dollars right now? Yo! Let's make it rain tonight! No, no, wait, wait. Before we make it rain, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that money. Like, here, come, I gotta teach you some stuff right now. An interest rate is the amount charged, expressed as a percentage of principal, by a lender to a borrower for the use of assets. Through this general formula, where SO stands for the amount of money that was lended, R is the percentage of interest you have to pay, N is the seasonality of payments, meaning the amount of payments that you have to do every X months or even once a year, and T is the amount of years you have to pay for interest, you will obtain the amount of money you owe to the original lender. So for example, if you were to go to a bank to get $1,000 at a 3% interest rate that you have to pay every 3 months along 2 years, your formula would look something like this, making you pay a total of $1,061.59, where the extra $61.59 is your interest over your original loan. Another factor that influences the value of money over time is exchange rates between countries. If you are currently in the USA, and have $1,000 and you want to go to France on a touristic trip, those $1,000 will have to be converted to euros and the conversion rates vary throughout time. $1,000 worth in euros will not be the same today than in one year. Inflation rates, interest rates, government debt, recession and other factors can affect a country's currency compared to others. Governments have a way to balance out these exchange rates but other governments, like the United States, have floating or flexible exchange rates that don't intervene in the alterations. Inflation, deflation, and disinflation. Inflation is a sustained increase in the average level of prices and a fall in the value of money in an economy. Inflation can be caused by an unexpected rise in the price of crude oil or other imported commodities, rise in government value-added tax, the pricing strategies and competitive pressure in markets, and fluctuations in exchange rates. For example, today, Lucy can buy many products in the supermarket with 50 euros. However, in 10 years, due to inflation, the same 50 euros will have decreased in value and will not have the same purchasing power meaning less amount of products. Deflation has the opposite effect. It's a persistent fall in the general level of prices in an economy. There is healthy deflation, which decreases the price of some goods due to improvements in productivity, and Malin deflation, which is the result of decline in total demand. Deflation is not to be confused with disinflation, which is a term used to describe a decelerating in the rate of inflation meaning there is still inflation in the economy, however, the percentage has decreased. The value of money can also be affected by the state of the economy of a country. There are two main scenarios, recession and economic boom, and the outcomes in both cases can be ambiguous. We will focus on recession. During recession, there is higher unemployment, lower real income, and less production, but this does not mean that the value of money necessarily decreases. For example, the value of the pound decreased by 25% compared to the dollar and the euro just during 2008. This was the result of a series of events that caused interest rates to fall, making the UK a less attractive economy to invest in. But in an opposite situation, the US experienced a time of recession in the 80s, yet the outcome was an appreciation of the dollar, which improved the competitiveness of US goods in the market. When we buy American bonds, we are looking for the profitability of the money invested in their two important factors, the exchange rate and the inflation in the eurozone. Analyzing the possible combination, it can happen that the euro gets weaker respect to the dollar, but at the same time the inflation in the eurozone is below than the American bonds yield. Other factor, the euro gets weaker respect to the dollar, but the inflation in the eurozone is above the American bonds yield. Lastly, the less possible situation, the inflation in the eurozone is the same than the American bonds yield. You know what? Listening to Dario was a great idea. Make it rain. <laughs>